So I'm just adjusting a couple of things on my screen here. Okay. Um, so hopefully you can see the screen. And um, tonight uh, we're going to do uh, a couple things at the beginning of the meeting here, but the majority of our meeting. Uh, we're going to spend talking about the data that Sharon presented to us, and then we sent a packet over to you guys uh, at uh, the end of last week. And we're going to try to decipher through some of that data and ask some of the questions that I had sent in the email. This will help start framing uh, some of those priorities and some of those options for us as we go forward. Um, so uh, first, though, uh, we'll uh, hit the, what's the buzz. Uh, and here I just I really wanted to ask uh, primarily after the board meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago, they made sure that everybody in the community kind of knew again who was on this task force. And, and more than anything, I'm wondering if anybody ended up having a conversation with somebody that uh, came from, from from the re-announcement of your names at the board meeting. So, um, and as you're uh, as you're attempting to find your unmute button, I just mentioned the screen background again. Um, I don't know if we got gift certificates sent out. Trust me, I have everybody recorded. So worst case scenario, I will bring them with me when we meet in person. Uh, but uh, this uh, screen background is probably a little bit tougher. It's, uh, I had it up last week, I believe, and uh, no one emailed me on it. Um, and uh, it's a little bit tougher. So I just I brought it back again this week. So um, it, anybody have contact with community members? No. No. No, somebody's saying no. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, going forward, once things start opening up and you're sitting at some of those sporting events like softball or baseball this summer, you'll have an opportunity to talk more. Uh, great news from the governor this week. All right, I'm just gonna hit a couple of things that uh, we had uh, last week uh, that were just some questions that were out there, a couple of parking lot items that I thought were probably applicable, at least for our discussion tonight. And so the first thing was, uh, I sent an email earlier today that had this information in it, uh, in a PDF, but just the floodplain overlay. And so you can kind of see in the picture there, uh, in the dark blue outlines, uh, what the property that the district owns is, and then we've identified, you know, some of your buildings and some of your facilities there. Um, but for what it's worth, the red uh, uh, hash marks that are in there, that's the regulatory floodway. So it's really not buildable space at all. Uh, the blue hash marks that are there is the 100 year floodplain. You can do some building in that area, but it requires some extra design uh, some uh, uh, higher elevations of buildings uh, and that type of thing. So there's uh, some obvious additional cost uh, and uh, uh, stuff that goes with that. Uh, and then the orange uh, that you'll see a little bit of orange here and there uh, in here, that's the 500 year floodplain. Um, certainly dealable uh, to, to use uh, from a building location standpoint and a uh, lot, uh, lot less uh, regulation around that. So just to try to answer that question. As you can see, there's not a lot of land that you have that is not in the floodplain, uh, including land that you're already using. So um, the next question, the next two questions were relative to uh, dollars and cents. And uh, the two questions uh, that we kind of had out there that we could answer uh, this week, and we'll talk more about other cost related things coming up. But uh, there was a question about rebates uh, in particular. And I think it just, hopefully, I don't, I don't know where I locked up there if, if you guys missed anything that I was talking about. My screen said that I uh, potentially did. Um, but anyway, uh, the LED lighting uh, rebate that we uh, had, had mentioned and you guys had asked about, uh, district-wide at all of your buildings would end up being around $18,000. Um, now, uh, the thing you got to watch out for is, is that those rebate programs change uh, from time to time, depending on what the utilities are doing. So that could go up, that could go down. Uh, it all really depends a little bit on when you end up doing your project, what programs are out there. Uh, the other thing then was a question around utility savings. And we had kind of showed a graph, or Sharon showed a graph that uh, indicated uh, a little bit higher cost per square foot that you guys are paying for utilities uh, on a monthly basis than what we would uh, 
say is, is maybe quote unquote typical uh, for what we'd like to be able to see and uh, know that we can generally accomplish. Um, and so if we, uh, the question was, if we were in that range, that more typical range, uh, how much money would we be saving a year uh, in our operational uh, budget? And uh, so the, the rough calculation on that is about $68,000 uh, a year, again, that's district-wide kind of giving consideration to all your buildings. Um, is there anything, Sharon, that you want to add to that or anything that I messed up in my explanation? Nope, nope, I think that covers it. Yeah, just uh, going back to the rebates, it's also dependent on what type of solution you use. So they'll look at, are you replacing the lamps? Are you replacing fixtures? Um, and then looking at kind of the wattage that's going in there. So. Yeah, there's a few things that'll that'll affect that rebate. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have questions uh, on that? We did get a question in the chat and asking about how many light fixtures we're talking. Uh, I don't have an exact count for you. That's something that we do as we went into detailed design. So. Thank you for watching the chat. Hey, um, this is Kristen, and I'll just mention that some of the light, um, some of those changes have been made. We're doing those um, sort of bit by bit, and we have gotten some rebates, but I have no idea how many have been done and how many remain. I know there are some lots left to do, but for example, I know they did a, a section of Lambert just um, a couple months ago. So some of those are in process, but I know we have a lot left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that would affect this as well too, so I don't, from when we looked at it, but yeah. Thanks, Dr. Ricky. Um, and we have another question in the chat that we have an estimate on what it would cost to replace the light fixtures. Um, you know, Tom, I don't know if you want to take that one. I know we do have that yeah, in the house. Yeah, but. Um, we, we will get into the specific costs around all these different things uh, when we get to that point where we talk about uh, dollars and cents. And that'll be coming up actually in the next few meetings. Um, we wanna try to get through the tours first, but then we'll take a look at what those costs are, um, give you an opportunity to kind of prioritize around costs. But really what we're trying to do at this point here is, is, is to take those issues and really take a look at the issues um, uh, and try to prioritize those based on what the issues are and not necessarily have that cost impact right off the bat. Um, I, I know that we, we like to go to the cost and a lot of times we think that we need the cost to be able to prioritize, um, but, uh, but trust me, this, this, this process works uh, pretty well here where we kind of really take a look at the issues, evaluate how they affect our kids, how they affect the school, how they affect our image, our pride, those types of things. And then what we do is we look at cost as being a, an additional factor that allows us to try to prioritize that. So, um, so we, we will get into specific costs uh, like that, as well as tax impacts. And, and but, uh, but just hang on for a, a, a couple more meetings and we'll get into that detail. All right, I'm gonna push forward here then. Um, and so here I just wanted to make sure that we provide a little bit of context or a little bit of clarity uh, around some of the information you got in the packet. And um, I'm just gonna uh, actually turn it over to Kristen here to maybe just take about two minutes to explain this. Um, but at the beginning of that packet you got, um, there was uh, some feedback information from the staff. Uh, that was in there. And as we've talked about, I don't show the slides anymore uh, real often, uh, but we talked about the fact that the school board gets input from a variety of different areas through, through this process. And one of the areas that they get input from is, is from the staff. And so there's a process uh, that uh, SiteLogic used to, to go and, and survey the staff uh, and talk to the staff about those things. So some of that information uh, is included in that packet of information that you got. And I just, I wanted to provide, or give Kristen a chance to provide just a little bit of context around what you're seeing there. Yeah, so I'll just mention a little bit because um, really it was great to have uh, you folks come and talk to our teachers and say, what are your thoughts? We had, we had um, teachers, administrative staff and non-teaching staff, and just really weigh into some questions about what, 
you know, what are things that are going really well? What are things that you think we need to improve on? And it's sort of a dream session. It was a little bit like, um, not necessarily what are the nuts and bolts that we need to fix right now, but rather what are kind of the big picture items that if we could do anything, we would attack first. So of course, he had some great comments like our group had here about what some of the positive things were. And you can see that strength slide kind of um, partially covered in the back. But some, you know, some typical things that we mentioned in this group too that we're proud of with West Delaware. Some of the challenges, which I wanted to mention that are in the front, um, some of them are self-explanatory and then others I think require a little bit more. Sorry, saying my internet connection is unstable. So let's keep going. Um, a lot so of us for are example, having lack of Wi-Fi. Yeah. Uh, lack of Wi-Fi you see in the middle top of that challenges. That's referring not to the district. We have lots of Wi-Fi spots all throughout the district and we continue adding them every year so that it's very consistent and stable across wherever you happen to be in the district, in the buildings, but not necessarily in the community. So we found that when we were, when we started trying to address this continuous learning because of COVID, that we have any number of families that don't have internet connections. And we actually know those exact numbers. Um, and so it actually is lower than it is in a lot of communities, but it continues to be an issue, especially if we move towards more instruction that requires that. So that's definitely a problem, but not within the building. Um, uh, things like uh, not all kids have equal opportunities. Um, again, it has a lot to do with um, perhaps some programming issues, but mainly it connects with that middle square that talks about transportation before and after school. So since we have five communities and four of them are pretty far flung from the others, it's obviously a problem for students to stay after school for activities if they don't have transportation and if their parents aren't able to provide that for whatever reason, work schedules or finances and that kind of thing. So that's a problem. Kids can't partake in before and after school activities. And sometimes that's been a question like, well, some schools in the urban areas do um, early bird classes, for example, where kids could come in early to get additional courses. Well, we can't really do that because it's not equitable for students in our outlying communities who need busing. So that's where that comes from. Uh, and so, and there's a couple, there's another lack of school pride is in the bottom right hand corner. Um, I really had a question about that. And um, I asked Tom and he, and Kevin reminded me about this, that it, it isn't so much a school culture pride issue, it's pride in our facilities, which is exactly why we're here having these conversations. So those are some of the background of why um, some of those came up as challenges. Some of them are really um, potentially community challenges like lack of local daycare, um, although it could be a West Delaware challenge too if it was something that we were going to offer. So, so that's a little context. If you have any specific questions, I can help. Yeah, great. I, I, I appreciate that, uh, Kristen. And um, and if people do have questions about that, we can kind of, uh, we can ask, we, we can answer some of those questions as you talk through those things uh, in our exercise tonight. Um, so uh, next thing is, is, is I just, I wanted to be able to provide a little bit of context about what, what the end looks like, right? Um, and, and what some of those uh, recommendations are that you might be sending to the school board, because sometimes uh, we've got, uh, folks that are thinking really detailed and, and other folks that are thinking really broad. So I just, you're, you're able to bring, you know, essentially any recommendation you want to the board, but I, but I wanted to provide uh, some examples of what some of our other school districts we've worked with are bringing to the, have brought to the board uh, as recommendations, just to give you some, some context on what that looks like. And so, so this first district that we're calling district A, um, just from a, a quick background standpoint, they've got about 4,500 kids enrolled in that district. They had about 23 uh, people uh, uh, working on the task force that we had. Uh, they had 11 meetings total, um, spent about 23 weeks or, or not, almost six months uh, on the process uh, and went through many of the same things that we're going through here. Um, some of the considerations that uh, give you a little bit again context here is, is that they had offsite preschool programs. Uh, they had five elementary schools that were K-6 um, that were built in a wide variety of, of ages. Uh, one seven through nine junior high school uh, that was built in the 70s. Uh, one 10 through 12 
senior high school uh, built in the, in the late 90s. Um, and they had been seeing a, a declining enrollment for uh, the last seven years and were anticipating that to continue. Okay, so just to, to kind of frame it. And then they talked about a lot of the same types of things you guys are about utilities and building conditions and pride and all those types of things. So the recommendation though that they sent to the school board was that they uh, were recommending moving the ninth grade to the high school to take advantage of extra capacity they had because of the declining, declining enrollment, uh, converting the junior high over to a middle school concept, which was six, eight, and remodel that for a modern learning environment and pull that sixth grade class up. Um, closed one of their elementary schools that was one of their older elementary schools from a cost saving standpoint, and then refreshed the other elementary school uh, classrooms and incorporate that preschool uh, programming uh, into um, into the uh, into the uh, into those schools so they could they could bring that uh, uh, some states call it 4k some kids uh, states call it pre k uh, but nonetheless uh, bring that uh, programming into the school all right. Uh, they didn't. Uh, they, they didn't comment really on uh, tax impact uh, or cost with that. They kind of stopped short of doing that. Um, they didn't really have a, a wide consensus on that. Um, and then I'm going to wrap up and just talk a little bit about priorities at the end of this. But uh, so that was their formal recommendation that came to the school board. Uh, the second one is um, a, a little bit smaller district than, than the, the last one. About 1,300 students there. Uh, we had about 16 task force members. Uh, they did uh, seven meetings over about three months. Um, they had uh, off-site preschool programs as well. Uh, they had one K-2 uh, elementary school that was built in the early 50s. They had one 3-6 intermediate school, they called it, built in the early 60s. They had a, uh, a 7-12 combined junior-senior high school. Uh, that they uh, that they built in 1969, and they're a long-term declining district. Very s slow decline, but but declining for it says 15 years there. I bet it was probably 25 years that they were declining and continuing to decline. Um, and so their solution uh, was to uh, tear down uh, the elementary school, repurpose the intermediate school for other district or community uses. Uh, there was some tradition with that building, but it wasn't serving them well as a school. Um, building a, a new consolidated uh, pre-K through five elementary school. And so they wanted to pull that, that preschool uh, uh, services in uh, as well uh, as, as the last district. Uh, they wanted to move the sixth grade to the, the junior high and essentially make that a little bit more of a middle school concept again, six through eight from a programming standpoint. Um, and then complete a bunch of pri uh, priority deferred maintenance items or capital improvement projects at, at that uh, junior senior high school. And uh, then as they looked at costs and they looked at tax impact, they had recommended to the school board that they go no more than $10 a month as far as a tax impact. And that, that uh, project cost, they were estimating about 40 million. And the, the project cost really kind of floats a little bit in there depending on what interest rates are and that type of thing. But they really felt that that $10 a month was about the max that the community would, would uh, be able to sustain. Um, and then just the, the last one that I, I give here for a little bit of context, and, and this was a, a little bit different of a recommendation. This district was a, a larger district um, about 8,500 kids. They had about 40 members as part of their task force. Uh, we spent about nine months uh, or so on, uh, on that process. Uh, so it was a little bit longer process. Uh, they had more buildings to go through. They had seven elementary schools, two middle schools, one, eight, nine, what they called upper middle school uh, that was pretty old, 1945. Uh, one 10 through 12 high school that was very new, uh, built in uh, 2010. Um, and uh, a very fast growing district in this case. They're adding 100 plus kids a year uh, on average. And so uh, they had a wide variety of other different things to take a look at. So their recommendation actually looked a little bit different. Um, understanding that the district was, was kind of a fast growing district, they, they came up and recommended some different phases. Um, and so uh, they said phase one that we wanted to do right now, construct a new elementary school. They had uh, uh, some real capacity issues at the elementary school level. Um, phase two, coming back in like two to four years, depending again how that enrollment growth was to address what they anticipated to be an overcapacity uh, high school. Uh, and then phase three, 
uh, maybe four to six years out, and you know, another two to three years after the high school, uh, construct an additional new elementary school. And so they kind of broke theirs up into phases. They didn't give a ton of detail behind those things, but they broke it up into phases and then said, spend about 36 to $40 million in that first phase that they had talked about and include in that additional improvements at the existing elementary schools, as well as building that new one uh, to kind of, again, provide a, a level of equity amongst all the schools. Um, and then they put in an option and we've seen other groups do this as well, where they kind of go to the school board and say, this is, this is pretty much where we're at, but there's a few things that we're kind of flexible on and we're not entirely sure. Let's, let's provide an option or two for the board to consider when they're considering all the different things that they are. And so they provided an option here uh, to build two new elementary schools in phase one, instead of pushing that one off to, uh, to the third phase. Um, and so, uh, like I said, we've, we've seen some different options applied uh, at, at, different, uh, at, at different processes, depending on, on what the task force's uh, intent was. But I wanted to give you the idea here in particular that there, you, we don't need to have real, real precise detail around this. The other thing is, is that in our report out to the board, which is not always a super formal report, but our report back out to the board as far as what your work is, um, we do take a look, though, at what the priorities are that you have, and we'll go through an exercise as part of our work here to kind of rank the priorities that you have. Um, you've been generating priorities for us to, to include in, in uh, a survey of, of ranking uh, that you guys will do. You may not have realized that you're kind of coming around priorities, but a lot of the outputs that you're giving us are, are allowing us to dial into some suggested priorities. Um, and then... Um, and then we also go through a process in that report of just providing background or context as far as what, what the rationale is behind your recommendation. So that may be very specific rationale that you give us as output, and it might be more contextual rationale uh, as we take a look at different things that we've talked about and different outputs that you've had through the process. Um, and so uh, and, and the same went for, for all of these processes. So I just I, I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea uh, on what that looked like. So as we're starting now to crunch through some data, uh, hopefully that helps a little bit as far as what, what the end game is, is, is hopefully shaping out to, to look like. D does that make sense? Does anybody have a question on that at all? I'm, I'm seeing at least a few heads that have screens on shaking no. So, um, and, and we'll, we, we'll, we'll have some more discussion on this, but just as we we're going in to talk about that, I wanted to, to make sure we address that. Okay, so um, I just, again, I'm not gonna read them all. I just wanted to call our attention to our norms since we're gonna be doing the rest of the night group work. Uh, and, and again, the biggest thing here is just try to make sure you're hearing all the voices in your group. We're gonna break up into two groups tonight. Um, and, uh, uh, so we'll have uh, six people in each group, and uh, as we crunch through the data, uh, I, I, just, I, I, think, I think it'll work better just having a couple of extra people in the group. Um, and so, uh, so we'll have two groups. Just uh, try to make sure you're hearing all those voices, though, all right? Uh, also, remember also to assign a, um, a uh, recorder in your group uh, so you can capture uh, the, uh, the answers, the ideas uh, that you have around the questions that, that we're going to ask. And so you've seen the questions, so hopefully that helped you out a little bit. And uh, the first question that we're going to ask is relative to the information Sharon presented last week and the information that you saw in the kind of packet that we sent out last week uh, on Friday, um, what, first off, what do you see in there? As, as you go through that, there's kind of a lot of data um, and there, there's, there's a number of different components to that, but what stands out to you as, as really being important? Uh, and do you see anything that potentially interferes with our vision or strategic objectives? And so we heard about what we're trying to do in school and we heard from principals about what they wanna to try to do from a programming standpoint. And now we, we see this, this facility assessment, um, you know, what we're trying to make sense then of, of that assessment and, and, and what those important things are for us to, to try to consider uh, improving, changing, uh, or not, perhaps. And so uh, what stands out uh, as important and what do you see 
that's potentially interfering with that strategic uh, objectives or, or that strategic vision. Uh, and I think I've got everybody into groups here. I just want to double check and make sure I've got everybody. I missed one person. Okay, so um, we'll go to we'll go to uh, our breakout rooms and. Uh, have that discussion, and uh, we're going to do this for about uh, let's see, we've got uh, 45 minutes left. So let's uh, let's go let's go for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back out, and we're going to share those answers, and then we're going to go on to the, uh, the next question. All right, um, and keep going. I don't got it right out yet. All right, um, I'm, I'm going to send everyone there now if the magic works. Any, any, let me ask this. Is there any questions first? Okay, turn around. Who's missing? All right, here we go. Uh, what I wanted to do then is uh, just spend uh, a little bit of time uh, with the group here. Um, we're going to target maybe... Uh, five to eight, maybe 10 minutes at the most to just report out on what you guys talked about in, in this, uh, in, in this question. So, so uh, you had two groups. Uh, what did, what did you see in the data? And uh, we'll start with uh, breakout room one. Uh, and if you don't know which one that is, it's uh, John, Kate, Lori, um, uh, Maria, Nicole, Steve, and Tom. Um, that, that is, assuming you gave the right name when you uh, <laughs> uh, entered uh, Zoom. But uh, anyway, uh, maybe your, uh, maybe your uh, recorder or whoever you want to have as a spokesperson could uh, let us know how you answered that question. What do you see? And anyone from that group? We just basically talked about maintenance. You know, we, we didn't really get very far with it. Just all the different maintenance projects that are going to have to be done at some time. We just kind of overviewed and we ran out of time. Okay. All right. Um, and anything around the maintenance? So is there any, any you know, kind of comment or, or, uh, or, or feelings around the maintenance projects that, that, that you saw there on the list? The, any kind of feeling on on what's you know what was important there Not, i don't think i don't think we got that far okay all right um how about how about breakout room two what what did you guys maybe see within the data there that's standing out at at, at you uh well there were three main things that we saw. The electrical, the mechanical, and the HVAC is all uh, needing work. The, uh, the air quality was a big one because it came out with all the principals speaking. It was a big comment from the, the teachers. Um, the electrical, there weren't enough receptacles. There were loose outlets, that sort of thing. That's a kind of a safety hazard as well. Um, lack of decent air exchange. We also talked about the safety issues, um, specifically cameras, the traffic problem, um, but also the middle school, once you get buzzed in, you're not directly in the office. You actually have to go into the office, so really you could go anywhere. Um, and then also the best use of space. Uh, the confidentiality problems, the need for student decompression spaces, um, the need for more storage, the need for different kinds of meeting spaces. Um, but the three top ones we, we thought were the air quality, uh, mechanical, and electrical. Okay, all right. And um, if I missed anything, someone jump in. <laughs> I'll, 
I'll, I'll take that as you did a pretty good job, Julie. Um, <laughs> just, uh, just as a point of clarification on the security piece of it, I know that uh, the report uh, specifically identified the middle school, but Sharon, um, I don't, I don't know if you can just lend um, uh, a quick answer here, but I, I, I've gone into the high school, so I, I'm, I know that the high school has got the same situation the middle school does. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head of elementary school, but do, do all three schools have the similar um, security uh, concern? Uh, no, I know the elementary's got a secure entry because that was something we okay. talked a lot about was that you could, if you needed to get into the middle school, you could go, uh, or if you need to get into the elementary school, you could go through the middle school and um, have access where you wouldn't be able to in the elementary. So that was definitely something that came up um, in those discussions. Gotcha. gotcha. In high school, I'll jump in. High school has a very secure entry because they have a long um, kind of an entry corridor. So you need to be buzzed into two sets of doors. You get buzzed into the first door and then the secretaries can watch till you get to the second door and they have to buzz you in again. So the high school yeah, is very gotcha. secure. Yeah, all right. So, so at the high school, that line of sight is, is really, um, uh, when you're in that vestibule, you've got, you've got true, true line of sight. To uh, it's not necessarily line of sight, but we have cameras. So they okay. can see, yeah, and they can't, if, if someone, it's actually nice to have a double door because if someone was uh, somehow let in the first door and was behaving strangely or inappropriately, um, they just wouldn't let them in the second door. Yeah. Now they are glass doors, but um, there's actually a couple of them that you have to go through. Um, yeah. And like you said, Lambert is secure because once you get in, you're in a little vestibule and you there's sets of doors in front of you in the office to your right, and they're all locked. So you, um, well, you get into that little vestibule and then the office can see you and they can let you in. Otherwise you're sort of stuck there. But middle school, it opens to a corridor. So once you get in, you could go anywhere you wanted to. Gotcha. In including the elementary school, am I correct? In yeah, once you get in, they're connected. And so you could just yeah. walk over to the elementary and there's no, um, this connection. We also, um, by the way, uh, the Hawk Center also has secure entrances that you have to ring a doorbell um, and someone would have to come out and see who you are and let you in. They're a little less secure though because they're glass doors. So if you really want it in, you would be able to get in. Sure. Gotcha. All right. Uh, thanks for, for that clarification, guys. Sure. Um, anybody have anything else that they want to add from either of the groups on, on what you felt like you saw uh, in, in any of that data and the, the maps and the charts and all the stuff that was there? No? Okay. Um, you can certainly continue to talk a little bit about that in your groups, but I'm just going to show uh, the next question on the screen. And uh, so this one here is, is really around what, what are we missing, right? What, what else do you feel like you need in this realm? I get everybody wants cost, okay? So, you know, we, we, we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about that. I already know that. Um, and you'll get the costs. Um, but what else should we be asking? So what, what, are, what are some of the things we still need to explore? Um, is there additional data that you feel like you still need to uh, have a good understanding of where your schools are at uh, from, uh, from an engineering perspective? And, uh, and understand, again, tours we're going to do uh, yet, and, and costs are coming for sure. Uh, but what else do you need? So does that make some sense? Yep. All right. So I'm going to send you back to your rooms uh, again for about 10 minutes or so. And, uh, and then we're, uh, we'll come back and we'll kind of repeat this process, all right? All right, here we go. I think everybody's back. Um, and I don't, I don't, uh, don't want to delay because we're kind of going to be running up against the clock here. Um, so uh, hopefully, hopefully that went well. Uh, uh, group, we'll start with group two this time, uh, which uh, is Brittany and Bruce and Dan and John and John and Julie. Um, what, what else should we be asking? What, what are some of the things that we need to explore yet? What are uh, the data points that we maybe still need to look at with the exception of cost and tours?
Dan gonna go? Yeah, I'm sorry, just unmuting that. <laughs> um, part of what we talked about, uh, and Tom, I had emailed you earlier today, more so just to get my thoughts down. Um, yeah, and it was great, by the way. We talked about doing some sort of a, uh, what they call failure modes and effects analysis, where you look at the likelihood that something uh, is about to fail, which we have a lot of great data on. Thanks to you guys, it seems like you know we're running up against some systems that are way past their useful life, and failure is imminent. You you take that likelihood, and then you gauge it against the effect of what a failure would be. So, for example, um, if the flooring fails or is past its useful life, that's not as big of a, uh, an issue as if the HVAC fails, in which case you're out of school, right? So looking at those types of scenarios, the, the likelihood versus the effect, and then trying to gauge some list of prioritization um, from amongst all the available topics of uh, building repair and, and refurbishment, which are numerous, so something like that and i don't know if that's what we're going to start to get into later on um but that's something that i think the group needs to see yeah we've, we've got a few different things that we've done in the past dan but i i appreciated your email as well and and and, and that's essentially what you said in your email is what you just said now um, and and i've been giving it some thought today uh, after reading your email and and i think there's a couple of things that we can do um, that that mimic uh, uh, pretty closely what you're talking about, and 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 incorporate uh, some good uh, group input into to how to assess what some of those after effects are of a of a failure. Good. So, um, so anyway, all right. So group one, uh, what are what are your thoughts? Uh, John, Kate, Lori, Marla, Nicole, Tom, well, I think you're in that one. Well, like how long, you know, for some of these um, things that need to be repaired, I guess we were questioning how long is this going to take? Is this something that can be done in a summer? Are we going to have to relocate students for some of these? Are they going to take that long? So, you know, you're looking at some pretty major issues if you're looking at that. And that, I guess that's some of the information we'd like to have is, you know, if you do have to go in and shut down boilers and run new lines and do things like that, is that something that can be done in a summer? Or is class going to be disrupted while you're doing some of these jobs? Yeah, yeah. Sharon, can you uh, maybe answer that in 20 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> um, we work with school districts. That's really uh, the, our... Um, what we do so we're very good at getting in and making getting improvements done over the summer so no we we can get it done over a summer and get that done uh, there is there are some pieces that go um, into the school year but it never affects them being able to be in the classrooms um, but when you're talking about major HVC upgrades replacing piping things like that yeah we can get that done over the summer so yeah, I, I can attest that I was involved in two different schools that had work done in the summer and they that's all that's what they do so they get in and there are some things they can do ahead of time. They do it. Otherwise, the major work gets done in the summer and there, there's a few lingering things, but it doesn't interrupt the education. So it, we can get that done. Um, and I know sometimes uh, things like lighting and that type of thing, they'll even do sometimes overnight. Uh, they'll do some work overnight and that type of thing at, at, at points in time. So did you have uh, anything? We'll talk more about that, Tom, but did you have anything else that you guys were talking about that you might want more information on? Well, I guess is the uh, our, our our present buildings are they capable of what our future vision of education is going to look like? Are, mm -hmm. are, are our brick and mortar that we have now are they are there something that we're going to have for you know forty years down the road? Yeah. Is is our vision long term vision going to be the buildings we have now? Right, we may we may have issues with mechanical plumbing or whatever you know ventilation, but are the bones good? Right, correct. Yeah, uh, and, and Sharon, I do. You want, I I I I don't expect you to answer this. That's really more of an architectural question. But I, I mean, if you have any insight on that, feel free. But otherwise, I completely understand if that's not really your camp. Uh, no, it's not. But you know, I, we touched into it a little bit last time. But yeah, no, the the bones are good. There, I made the joke or the comment that they don't build them like they used to. So, yeah, it's, you got good bones. 
But I, yeah. um, I maybe we can bring one of the architects in and, and shed yeah. some more light on that question for you. When when we get together and talk about modern learning environments, we tend to like to bring an architect to talk a little bit about how space is used and designed uh, these days and how buildings are reimagined, existing buildings are reimagined uh, uh, to, to address some of those modern learning environment things. And so our architect can address uh, some of the, the, the bones question as well. Anyone have have other things? And, and you're certainly welcome to email me like Dan did uh, with thoughts after the meeting or, or uh, suggestions on additional uh, information or data that you'd like to see. Uh, but anybody have anything right at the moment? Yeah, I've got something. If we do decide to uh, build something new, would we have to uh, take down what we've got and build over it? Or would we move it close to it in order to keep it in the same campus area? Or would you be talking about moving outside of, uh, like, I assume this edge of the city kind of thing and uh, do something similar to that, or would you be uh, more apt to stay inside our uh, immediate area of buildings? Yeah, yeah the, the, the short answer on that is, is of course, we, we, we really don't know the answer to that right at the moment. Depends on what, we're, what, what you would want to build new. A high school obviously takes much more space than uh, an elementary school uh, most of the time. And so uh, we would we would engage our architects and probably some civil engineering folks to uh, to really kind of take a look at what that space requirement is, what you have, what the floodplain means. Um, we have done a close build right next to an existing school and then been able to tra you know transition over. Means some different things from a playground standpoint sometimes for a couple of years while that construction's going on. Um, but uh, for instance, the land that your high school is on. Uh, I, I would doubt that there would be any ability to do that because you're pretty much tucked right up against your property lines there. Um, and so we, we would just have to do some further investigation, John. Um, so I, I, uh, I'll defer that to more of an architectural question when, when we have them come to, to one of our meetings. And, and if we do need to build outside the floodplain, as you said, kind of on the edge of town, um, you know, then, then there would be the land acquisition question of that as well um and in there we've worked with school districts that 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 were doing that and and of course you you have to have a, a seller that's willing to sell land to the school district in order to do that as well anyone else as i go to share my screen all right the the last question is uh, and we'll spend a little bit of time on this, maybe not quite as much as before, just so we can honor uh, the amount of time we've got here tonight uh, as best as we can. What's important relative to the information we've looked at so far? And so kind of those prompts, you don't have to answer the questions exactly, but what actions at this point do you think you would maybe take to the school board as a recommendation of things that we, we really need to do from a prioritization standpoint? Uh, what in your mind right now, um, and it's not entirely a fair question because you don't have all the information yet, but at this point, what what do you feel like is the priority from what you've seen so far? Um, and uh, what we'll do is, is we'll jump back into the rooms and I think uh, right now we'll just, uh, we'll jump in for about five or six minutes and uh, and see if we can tackle that question and then come back out and, and we'll try to wrap up fairly quickly after that. All right, so we'll head to the rooms now. Hey, Dr. Ricky, real, real quick. Um, yeah. Are, are all of the doors that aren't the main entrances to the schools, are those locked during the day? Yes, they're all locked. They and are. teachers have um, swipe cards, which is really a nice addition because if any, it used to be the keys were out all over the place because people would have a key and they'd give it to somebody else. Uh, who knows, someone who wanted to borrow it or get in, whatever. And we couldn't control that at all. Now, all those keys, we rekey all the entrances so old keys don't work at all. I don't even have a key to the building. I have a swipe card, but I don't have a master key. Um, there are only a couple people in the district who do because we're trying to keep it secure. Um, if anybody's swipe card gets stolen, we just shut it off. So it's much more secure that way. Thank you. Yeah, great question. 
All right, so uh, just a, a quick output, and then I just, I wanna quickly address the schedule going forward. So, um, but uh, quick uh, output, uh, group one, John, uh, Lori, Marla, Nicole, Steve, Tom, um, and Kate, who's I think not Kate, but uh, anyway, um, <laughs> what, uh, what, do you, what do you see as priorities? Well, we kind of struggled with this one, figuring out what priorities are. We're we're still trying to decide if um, going forward, if our high school, our elementary, and our middle school are really structurally ready to take on the next 30 years of education. So we kind of get hung up on that a little bit, wondering if the hallways are going to be straight and the classrooms on the side, or if there's going to be more rooms segregated into small soundproof areas like some of the newer buildings. Curious as to what newer buildings are really constructed like these days. Perfect, perfect. And, and we are gonna talk about that. So that, that'll help. I, I didn't mean to take everybody off of uh, uh, that. I just, I wanted to share my screen for time's sake, just so you've got my phone number and email address again. So those of you who are recorders can send me your notes afterwards. Um, how about group two, uh, Brittany, Bruce, Stan, John, uh, Julie, what, what did you guys kind of think were priorities at, at this point? I guess I can speak. That's okay. Um, I guess we struggle, we really struggled with this question too. Um, we ran the whole gamut from, we need to update, you know, HVAC and air quality basically yesterday to do we need to build an entire new facility. So we just didn't feel like we were at a point that we could say, you know, here's priority one, two, and three. It just seemed like we had a really wide range of of where to go and, and what to decide on. We really struggled with pinpointing yeah. exactly what those things were. Sure. Sure, and, and, and that's not unusual, all right? So um, it's, it's not unusual, but, but part of the reason why we ask that question, we go through the exercise, is it, is, is it gets you thinking though about that stuff. And, uh, and, and, and we do understand that there's more information that, that's coming that you want to consider. And, and um, uh, so you won't, you, you won't be in that same spot when we get to the end of the process, um, but, but, it, but it's good to start thinking about that because then as you hear the other information, it continues to inform you know, that, that question that's maybe sitting in the back of your mind subconsciously. So um, anybody else have anything uh, else they want to add to that discussion at this point? All right, I know we're running about five minutes late. So I just want to address real quickly our schedule going forward. So tonight we did this data retreat thing. The next three weeks, we're giving you a break uh, just to kind of uh, uh, take a breather, try to connect with the community maybe look at some of the data that you've got again start you know continuing to think about these questions that we just uh, tried to address tonight we're going to come back and we, we we're going to send a survey out to you about the possibility of, of doing uh tours uh on june 17th and then uh, either uh the following week june 24th or july 1st um and, and i'll get some more details in the survey for you uh, but just it, it, it sounds like the governor's kind of opening things up and if things are legally able to happen in small groups, we're talking about uh, small groups going through and doing the tour, probably four or five people in a group. Um, and uh, would you be comfortable with that? Uh, understanding that we'd probably have masks available for people and, and, and all, the, uh, all, the, all the rituals that go with, with uh, gathering these days. Um, and then we'll, we'll ask you a little bit about what your plans are for 4th of July and just make sure that we're not, you know, jumping on top of somebody's uh, summer vacation and that type of thing. Um, and so, so that would be June 17th. When we start coming back, though, we're hoping that we'll be able to get into this uh, uh, in-person meetings because, quite frankly, this virtual stuff just, you know, is, is uh, awfully tiring. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'd much rather be in person having these conversations. Uh, so anyway, hopefully we'll be able to do that. We'll do the tours. We've got a meeting coming up that we'll have architectural folks at, and we'll talk about what modern learning environment looks like, what that looks like if it's a new school, but also what that looks like if it's a reimagined school that you have. Um, and then um, we're still kind of uh, 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 
trying to press out the details on the, the few meetings that we've got after that and just what that schedule looks like in August. So we'll, uh, we'll get you some updates on that stuff, but look for a survey uh, in the next week or two here just relative to that uh, June 17th tour and your comfort level uh, on that. And, um, and really at that point, um, unless anybody's got questions uh, or comments, uh, we can be done for tonight. Anybody got anything? All right, well, we really appreciate your patience going through this and this, this method and um, appreciate your emails. Feel free to reach out. I've talked to some of you on the phone, talked to some of you via email and uh, continue to do that. And, and hopefully really soon here, uh, maybe even the next time we see each other, it'll be in person, so. But enjoy the next couple of weeks. Hopefully the weather gets better for you. It was beautiful here in Madison. Sound like it was crummy there today, though. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a nice night.